In this video, we will learn about the SUMIF function. Before we continue forward, let me just clean up this worksheet a little bit. So I'm going to remove these columns. And I would like to bring in the employee name just as it is from there, just to begin with. So I'm going to click here in cell NE3, and I'm going to type in equals, select the cell A3, click enter. And now I can just copy this over. So I have all the employee names here. What we are trying to do here is to calculate the number of hours worked by each employee in a monthly basis so that we can calculate the number of hours worked every month and then we can calculate the salaries that we need to pay each employee every month. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the sum of certain cells, but it is going to be based on the month that they belong to. So let's just start with typing in the month number here. So I can just select them, copy them, and now I have the 12 months. And I can type in the month in text. So that means January, February, March, and so on. So as you can see here, Excel can understand this pattern also. So it is able to, when it copies over, it actually copies them as consecutive months, so January through December. So this is very convenient if you work with a lot of month information. Now, we have these two rows created now. So let me just highlight it in a slightly different color so that we can distinguish the header and the calculations that we are going to make. Let me just center both of them. And now we're going to use the function called SUMIF. The way the SUMIF function works is, let me type in SUMIF, open. So you can see SUMIF says, adds the cells specified by a given condition. So it's we can just use the SUM function if we want to add all the days for Rahul. But if we want to only add the days in January, then we need the SUMIF function because we are filtering based on a specific condition or criteria. So I'm going to open parenthesis here. So Excel will tell me what the different arguments to this function are. The first thing, it needs a range. The range is nothing but, in this case, whatever we are trying to put the condition on, for example, here it is the month. So we want the month to be January. So we need to show Excel where the month information is located in the source data. So I'm going to select all the values in row one from B1 all the way to the end here until NB1, which is 31st of December. So that is going to be our range. And we want this range to be the same for all the employees all the time because this is the month information for all the 365 days. So in order to do that, we have to lock these and make them as absolute references so that it doesn't change when I copy the formula over. So in order to do that, we can put dollar symbols separately or while we are in this point mode or while we are in this mode of actually selecting the range or the argument here, then I can just hit F4 key. And what this does is it puts dollar symbols uh, for all the rows and columns here so that it makes them absolute reference. And if I keep hitting F4 again, it'll go through the you know, the different types of references that you can have. And here we don't have anything, but what we need is this. So this F4 keyboard shortcut will toggle through the different options, but we this is the option we need. So I'm gonna keep it here and then put a comma. And the next um, argument for this function is the criteria. So for Rahul and in this specific um, cell that we're trying to calculate for January, we need to give the criteria, which is January. So I'm going to select this because this is the month number we need to match. And since this information is in numbers of the month numbers, so we are using this 
to as a criteria against that. And keep in mind that when we copy this formula over for all the other employees in January, we don't want this month number to change. So which means we want to lock the row number as we go down. So let's put a dollar symbol against one and then put a comma and then the last argument is what are we trying to sum we are trying to sum up all the number of hours worked by rahul so we are going to select this and we will have we have selected b3 to the december 31st which is nb3 and this is going to be the summing range because we want to sum up all the values all the number of hours worked by rahul on days where the month number is january or month number is one so now we are done with it the fi final thing is when we copy this formula over to other other employees we want the row number to change and but the column number as we move to the next few months we don't want it to change we want we want all these 365 days to be evaluated against in order for us to lock this down we would like to lock the column b and and b3 here because as we copy this formula over we want nisha to look at the same 365 columns but it needs to be in row number four for Nisha, row number five for Anjali. So we'll, we'll look at it after we enter it so that we can understand better. I'm going to close this. And now that we are done with this function, I'm going to hit enter. And now this formula says 111 hours worked by Rahul in the month of January. So let's copy this over and let's look at Nisha. For Nisha, it is actually looking at the month number information in the top row, which is B1 to NB1. And then it's comparing that with one because we want to only find the data for month number equals one. And then it is actually summing the values in row number four from B4 to NB4. That means it's only summing up the values for Nisha. This is great. And if you look at, for example, Anjali, you'll be summing up the values only in the row where Anjali's data is. So this is a very convenient, very quick way of actually calculating the number of hours worked by each employee in January. And now if we want to extend it to every month, then copy, select these, then copy this over to the other columns. So let's check, for example, April. So April, we are again comparing with B1 to NB1, which is the first row, which has the month number for 365 days. And we are comparing that with number four, which is April. And we are actually summing up the cells where Rahul's data is. And let's take, for example, Michael. And here we are summing up Michael's values where the month number equals four. So this is a um, clean way of calculating the number of hours worked by each employee every month. And I'm just gonna unfreeze the panes now because we don't need the freeze panes anymore. And I'm gonna scroll to the right. And now, there we go. So we have a nice table of hours worked by each employee every month. Now let me just format them a little bit so that it looks like a table. And there we have it. So we have all the employee information and the number of hours. So quickly, let's make another extension here and show that how easy it is to calculate, for example, the salary for each employee every month. So I'm going to copy again the names first. And then what we would like to do is to enter hourly salary for each employee so that we can calculate the monthly salaries. So now we have the hourly salary. So now we need to calculate the 
monthly salary. So I'm going to select the copy all this and I'm going to paste it here. So now we have the month and the month name and we would like to just multiply the hourly salary times the number of hours worked. And what we did here is we, we took the number of hours worked by Rahul in month of January and then multiplied it with the, his hourly salary. So now when we copy this formula over across to all the months, then we want the hourly salary should be still 100 rupees as for Rahul. So we want to lock this column number and let's say enter. And now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this. And there we have it very quickly. We have the total amount that we should be paying each employee each month.